Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 1st of October 2011, and we have a lot that's going on. We've had a major eruptive flare, we've had some beautiful CMEs, and we even have a comet crashing towards the Sun. But before we get to all of that, let's deal with our trivia question. 53 years ago today, NASA came into existence. However, it's not often known that it replaced a different agency. What was that agency called and when was it founded? The answer will be given at the end. Since yesterday we've had three C flares and two M flares. In fact, one of the M flares is underway as I put this together. These have been produced by a combination of regions 1302 and 1305. So let's take a look at the regions and see what's happening there. We have five officially numbered regions on the disk at the moment. Region 1304 having lost its single spot overnight. We have four unnumbered regions on the disk as well. Region 1301 is right on the northwest limb, and we can't see what's going on there, so let's start with Region 1302 in the northwest. Despite being the largest region on the disk, this has only produced one sea flare in the last 24 hours. The two leading spots in this region have continued to change. However, there seems to be significant decay in the satellite spots and trailer part of this region. Next we move on to regions 1305 and 1306 near disk center. Region 1305 has produced two C flares and two M flares in the last 24 hours, so it's very much the center of activity. And you can see why with the development of a lot of spots all around the region and a new trailer spot developing just behind the leader. Region 1306 on the other hand has hardly changed at all and has produced no major flares. Region 1307 in the northeast hardly seems to have changed at all and has produced no major flares. As I said before, we have four new regions on the disk that are unnumbered. In the northwest, just above region 1302, there is a small spot developing. In the southeast, near disk center, a few spots have emerged in the area where I was discussing the emergence of some uh, magnetic polarity yesterday, so I'm rather proud of that. The region near the southeast limb has still not yet been numbered. However, it's not a very impressive region. But speaking of impressive regions, there are at least two huge spots coming over the northeast limb at the moment. You can see them here in more detail. Now let's take a look at the evolution of these regions over the last 48 hours. And here I would concentrate in both the sunspot movie and the magnetic movie from the HMI instrument on region 1305. And compare its growth with the region next to it, 1302. In the transition region from the AIA instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory, we see a beautiful eruptive event from region 1302. You can see the splash of material exiting to the northwest in this picture. Watch for it, it's right at the end of the video sequence. But look for the same phenomena in the low temperature coronal movie. In the latest high temperature image from the SXI instrument on GOES, Again, we should look at the east limb. We can see that there is a bright region coming over the northeast, which is probably associated with those large spots. But there's an even brighter and larger region coming over the southeast. And tomorrow we should start seeing some activity from that. From the coronagraph data on SOHO, you can see that we continue to get a parade of coronal mass ejections. However, right at the end of the C3 movie, um, the sharp-eyed amongst you will notice that there is a comet coming towards the sun. I've been waiting for most of the day to get more data on that, but none has yet come in, and hopefully tomorrow I'll be able to show you the complete trajectory of that comet. It looks like another one of the Crookes comets, which means it will burn up uh, before it reaches the Sun. From the ACE data we see that the solar wind has been varying quite a bit in the last few hours, and that might correspond to the approach of this uh, coronal hole that I was talking about yesterday. The high energy electron flux has been at relatively high levels for the past 24 hours, before taking a nosedive when the solar wind started playing up. And it looks as though we're just about done with the proton event. We can see from the NOAA 19 images of the auroral zones that they are much more agitated than they were over the last couple of days. And notice they've spread beyond the Arctic Circle in both cases. Uh, now uh, aurora should be visible from the whole of northern Canada. The KP index has been varying between 0 and 3 with the odd period of unsettled level 4. While there are no NOAA space weather alerts in effect at the moment, there was a R1 level radio blackout warning uh, last night, which is a very mild event. So in summary then, the X-ray background has risen to B5, 
Sunspot number has fallen to 89. The radio sun intensity is at 138 solar flux units. The solar wind speed is at over 500 kilometers per second, but with a density of less than one proton per cubic centimeter, as geospace conditions are rated as quiet. So my summary for the next 24 hours is that C flares are likely, M flares are possible, X flares are unlikely, sunspot number should ease higher, coronal mass ejections are likely, the solar wind speed should go higher, and a geomagnetic storm is still possible. From the composite coronal image we can see that there's a large region due back over the southeast limb tomorrow. Now finally the answer to the trivia question. The agency that uh, predated NASA was called NACA, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. It was founded in 1915. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.